1530, 1530. Mm -hmm. the Knights of St. John of Jerusalem were given the island of Malta by King Philip II of Spain, who owned Malta and Sicily. And he said, don't pay any rent, just give me a hunting bird, mm -hmm. a Maltese falcon. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. A live one. They were famous so that's as hunting birds, all right? Why did they ask? Was the Maltese more? falcon considered like almost like the endangered species of its day? There was like a, a certain finite amount of them at the time or something or something Limited sacred? amount, of course. Uh -huh. And they were good hunters. Oh, I see. Right? Why did the Knights of St. John of Jerusalem want to come to Malta? All right? Because the Moors, the Muslims, kicked them out of Jerusalem. They went to the island of Cyprus, and the Turks chased them out of Cyprus. They went the Ottomans, yeah. to the island of Rhodes. They chased them out of Rhodes. They asked the Pope yeah. for another island somewhere, a country. They wanted a country. And Theros uh, or they coast, were coast? so Maybe coast. No, was it coast? Uh, because they had a big fleet. Uh -huh. Okay. Why did they become sailors? Originally, they were doctors, medical men. Right? Uh, but to defend themselves in, in Jerusalem, where they had hospitals, they had to learn to fight. So they became soldiers. And then living on, on an island in, in Cyprus and Rhodes, they became sailors and had this fantastic fleet in the Mediterranean. So they needed an island with good harbors. And they gave them Malta. But uh, Suleiman the Magnificent, 30 years later, in 1565, 35 years later, okay, sent 40,000 troops and 300 ships to take Malta from the Knights. But the Maltese, who were Christian, ganged up with the knights. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, it's just a continuation of uh, yeah. Inquisition, Crusades. Yeah. Yes, and they, uh, they killed so many of uh, the Moors, probably it was the poisoned water, the, the poisoned water springs that killed the Moors. Mm. And the Moors decided to say, that's it. Okay? And they left. And the Pope was so very happy with this that he asked all the kings and princes of Christian Europe mm. to send money to the Grand Master who defended Malta in the famous Great Siege of 1565, mm -hmm. who was called Jean Parisio de la Vallette. Mm -hmm. With the money, Lavalette built an impregnable city, an indomitable city, Valletta, which is still standing today, all right? But, uh, Sarah... Uh, could, could you show it from, uh, is, it, is it easy to see from this vantage point? If we yeah. look outside? You want to do it? So. Is the story could go bigger because I could show you how they defended Malta. Wait a minute. They defended Malta from where we're standing. <laughs> All right. So this was set up. Huh? When the Knights of St. John came to Malta in, in 1530, okay, the capital city was in the center of the island because that was the way of thinking that uh, a foreigner to attack you has to come by sea. So the further away you are from the sea, mm -mm. the better. So the Arabs built Medina on top uh, of the ruins of a Roman city.
called Melita, which, where the Maltese name derives, Malta. Melita is the honey city, probably because of the color of the rock. Uh, it's honey color. So when the knights came with the big fleet, they didn't want a land-bound city, so they came to El Castrumaris, the castle by the sea, where we are standing this morning. Eventually they called it Fort St. Angelo. And they defended Malta from here. And then the Moors gave up and left. And thanks to my great, 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 great grandfather, Sarah speaks Italian. Right? Otherwise, mm. she would be speaking Arabic today if the Moors had taken Malta. You see, because from Malta, Sicily, Sicily, Italy, Rome, Pope kicked out of the way, <laughs> Vienna, here I can come. That's where they wanted to go. You don't have to say thank you. It's a long time ago. <laughs> and I don't even know my great-great-grandfather. Thank right. God, well, Italian is a little but more. That's pleasing. how we change the history of the world. Okay, but the Jews, this little place. But what was the profession of most Jews of Malta? Uh, like always, all right. They were the negotiators. They they had languages. They had uh, Jewish connections everywhere. So during the stay of the Knights of Saint John. Many knights were uh, caught by the Moors, and Lavalette, as a young knight, was a prisoner of war, and he was sold as a slave, and he rode in, in, in Moorish ships for seven years, rowing. Rowing. Okay. But we had... Uh, a few Jewish families who could go to North Africa, mm -hmm. Tunisia, speak their language, and uh, and ransom uh, the Christians. Ransom? Ransom is buy out. Uh -huh. okay? uh, ransom is the money you pay to uh, release a uh, slave. Okay? Ransom money. So the Knights of St. John collected from rich Maltese, who were pirates in their name, and uh, they bought out the but what did brother they, knights. But what did these negotiations uh, lead to? I mean, did they lead to a uh, better economy? This was a business, yeah. all right? But, you, for the, but among themselves or for yeah, You pay Malta? the agent who brings up back your brother from slavery, okay? He does it for a fee. Uh, and I think there was a very famous Jewish philosopher. Spinoza? Uh, Not Spinoza. Much earlier. A famous Jewish philosopher who was exiled to the smallest island of Comino. If you look Spinoza him up. was exiled. I'm not sure you see. If, if, if you look him up, the, the name comes up. And I learned the story in uh, Bertolt Brecht's theater mm -hmm. in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting uh, next to him. And, and uh, in the interval, I went to the bar, and there was this couple in the bar. So I said, are you English speaking? You know, because the play was in German, and I don't know German. And I said, ah, Malta, Malta. And she, the girl immediately said, do you know the... Uh, I said, I heard something somewhere. Was it him? What's the name? Abraham Samuel Abu Lafe. Ab Ab Abu Lafe or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you found it immediately? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that was fast. You see? It's the digital age. And he left good writings. No, there was always, you know, some Jewish Hebrew families here and businesses. A, a friend of mine 
the, the surname was Tayar. Tayar, which Tayar. probably means probably means cotton wool. 